Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome back to the Brownstone. I am your friend and neighbor, Rich Brown. Um, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about triads. Last week, we got off to a great start and we got into the basics of triads. If you missed that video, I'll leave a link somewhere. I don't know where. There? I don't know. Anyway, I'll leave a link. And then you can go back and check that out. Today we're going to continue on with part two of our, uh, I don't know if I'll call it a series just yet. Eh, maybe I'll call it a series because I feel like I have a lot more I want to say about triads that we will get into over the coming weeks. So yes, part two of our series on triads. I'm glad you're here. I hope you had a wonderful week. And um, let's dive right in. Last week, we got into the whole idea of playing a few exercises all based on triads and the shapes being created when you play the different sort of configurations of the triad from the root. Today, we're going to continue on with some of that. And we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, the inversions, the triad inversions. I don't want you to be intimidated by that word. It's a very simple concept. And uh, by the end of this video, you'll be playing inversions with the greatest of ease. Last week, we got into playing major and minor triads. This week, I'm just going to continue right from where we left off with an exercise that combines the two triads. So what we'll do is we'll play two times on the major triad and then we'll go two times on the minor triad, and we'll take that through all three shapes. The three shapes, we have three shapes of the triads. I won't go through them again. I don't want to make this video too long, but I really want, I really want to get through everything. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play major and minor triads twice on each triad, the major and the minor, and then we're going to take that through all three shapes. Very simple concept. So again, I'm working with D major, right? So shape one on the D major, I play the triad and I end on the octave of the root. That's the D major. So now what I want to do is I'll play the D major twice and then I'll switch to D minor, shape one, and then I'll go through, do the D major again, this time on shape two and then D minor on shape two, and then D major shape three, D minor shape three, twice on each triad, and it sounds beautiful. It goes like this. D major, shape one. shape two coming up. so beautiful. I love it. And, you know, the, the really wonderful thing about these exercises is that we're creating music. We're learning the shapes, uh, but we're also really creating some beautiful sounds, which can't go wrong with that. All right. There was, if you remember, one more shape, and that involves playing the notes below 
the root note. So again, we're dealing with D major, right? So we have D, F sharp, and A. So our subshape, shape four, involves D, F sharp, A, both notes on the E string. Second fret of the E, fifth fret of the E. So now for the next exercise, I'll go back and forth between these subshapes of the major and the minor triads. I have the D major. And of course, if we want to make the major minor, all we have to do is bring the F sharp down to an F natural. And we have the D minor triad. So same exercise, now using this subshape, D major, twice, now D minor, So nice. You gotta love it, right? Okay, so we've done the subshape, we've done our three shapes starting on the A string. So now we have to move our shapes to the E string and then play the same exercise. The difference here being the addition of the notes on the G string. So let's go through that. I have the D major triad. And the octave is here at the seventh fret of the G string. But uh, if I want all of the notes in this position, then it's a good idea for me to go ahead and play the third, that F sharp above the, the octave. So here I'm at the eleventh fret of the G string. I just add that note to my shape. Sounds gorgeous. And of course, if I want to make that minor, all I have to do is switch those F sharps to F naturals. There's our minor triad. So let's go back and forth. Two times D major, two times D minor, starting from the E string. That's D major, now D minor, F natural, F natural. Do it again. D major, these exercises. I love them. Okay, here is where things get interesting. So earlier I mentioned the idea of playing the inversions. Now all that is going to involve is a very simple concept. With our three notes of the triad, we have D, F sharp, and A. So with each inversion, all we're doing is we're playing the triad starting on a different note of the triad. So D, F sharp, and A, that's the root position of the triad. If I play F sharp, A, and D, well, that's the first inversion of the major triad. And then if I play A, D, and F sharp, that's going to be the second inversion of the major triad. So let's find those notes and see what shapes arise 
so that we can memorize those shapes and get them into the muscle memory as well as, or as familiar as, our root position shapes. These are the things that we really have to focus on so that all of these shapes are equally as comfortable on the fingerboard. We're really getting to know exactly what, not only what these ideas sound like, but maybe even more importantly, what they look like. Because as soon as the idea pops into your head, there is a shape that goes with that idea. And then it makes it very easy for you to articulate whatever it is that you're hearing in your head, right? So let's check this out. I'm going to play um, a D major triad to a D minor triad. But watch what I do here. I'm gonna play shape two of the D major. Now I could switch to shape two of the D minor. But there's a huge stretch happening between the third and the fifth. But if I switch to shape three of the minor from shape two of the major, you follow? I hope you're following. Then what I get is a much more comfortable transition. Here's shape two of D major. Now here's shape three of D minor. Why did I do that? I'll show you. If we're talking about the inversions of the triads, um, then it's good to understand what's going on when you're playing from the third using shape one. In other words, when you play the third and the fifth on the same string. Here's that, that's the major. So that's the first inversion of the major triad. Third, fifth, root. And then the minor would be F to the A to D. So that's a huge stretch. But I still want to have an understanding of what that looks like, whether I use it or not, just so I know. But if I play, uh, but. If I play shape three of both of those triads, that's the major, that's the minor. So starting from the third, there's my major. Now check out what happens here. I've got that F sharp on the A string, I'm on the ninth fret of the A string, and then the other two notes are on the seventh fret of the last two strings. So there is a physical shape being created when I play that configuration of notes. And that shape, just as any other shape that you play on the fingerboard, does not change in structure when you move it around. So that means when I play this shape, so that's ninth fret of the A and then seventh fret of the D and G strings. That shape is the first inversion of a major triad. So there's our first inversion. And then what I can do to complete the shape is play the octave of where I started. Right? So there's my, there's my first inversion starting the triad from the major third. So when I do the first inversion of the minor, starting the, the triad from the minor third, that F sharp becomes an F natural. And then the other two notes stay the same, obviously, because we're only dealing, we're only changing one note in order to make the major triad a minor. So we have the F natural, and then those two notes on the seventh fret of the D and G strings. And then, of course, I will play the octave of the note where I started, the octave of that F natural, at the 
11th fret of the G string. So here I have the major, here I have the minor. I hope that all makes sense. So that is going to be the first inversions of the major and the minor triads. So let's say we start building an exercise here. What I'll do is I'll play shape two of the major triad. I'll go to shape three of the D minor triad, putting the root and the third on the same string. Now check this out. Now I'll go to the first inversion, major. sense? So we've started our triad from the root, we've started our triad from the third, now we just have to find what happens, what shape arises um, when we start the triad from the fifth. The fifth, in this case, being the A. So we just find the A on the A string, which is conveniently located at the twelfth fret of the A, and then all we have to do is follow through. That's the fifth. The root D is going to be at the twelfth fret of the D string. And if I go up a major third from that D, there's my F sharp, the eleventh fret of the G string. And then I play the octave of the note that I started from. So that's the A at the fourteenth fret of the G string. I got to make sure I get my information right before I take it to the bass, which is what we'll do now. So, there's the fifth, there's the root, there's the major third, there's the octave of the fifth, victory is ours. I won't do that again, I promise. So, um, now we have all of our inversions. We've got the root position, we've got the first inversion, and now the second inversion. How beautiful is that? So now we can take the same exercise. Second inversion of the major and minor triads in D. So here we go. Major. So here's the exercise. All three shapes, right? Root position of the triad, first inversion of the triad, and then second inversion of the triad. And then we alternate between the major and the minor. So here is the entire exercise. It goes like this. Starting with D major, second shape. position, going to root position of the minor triad using shape three. I'll do it again. D major, D minor. Now I'll switch to the first inversion. Be my 
That's it, friends and neighbors. That's all I got for this week. I mean, I have a lot more, a lot more. But I don't want to make this lesson too long. And I don't want to leave you with too much information. I don't want to bog you down with a whole bunch of work. These simple exercises, again, I cannot stress enough. I know I say it all the time, but they're so beautiful and they're so fun to play. Take them at your own pace. You can play them a lot slower than this. If you want, you can play them a lot faster than this. As long as the information gets into the fingers and into the brain so that playing the second inversion of a minor triad is just as instinctual as playing the root position of a minor triad. These are the shapes that we have to get to know and understand in order to really get a better understanding of how to work our way through more complex changes. Because sometimes playing the root position of the triad on every chord is not the most melodic uh, course to take. So then when we start to play changes and then mix and match some of the shapes and some of the inversions, really beautiful things, really melodic things can happen. That's the goal. All right, my friends, my neighbors, um, I'm going to leave it there and wish you all well. And as I always say, have fun with these. These are meant to be fun. Uh, if you like the video, then please click like, share it all over the world with all your friends and all of your neighbors. And um, anyone who you think could use the help in this area. Uh, and you can also donate to the channel if you're in a position to do so. It really helps me out, helps me to improve the quality of these videos and, uh, and bring you new content as much as I possibly can. I try to put out a new video every week. I can't make that promise as there are other things that need to get done over the course of a week. But I will do my best to be here for all of y'all uh on a weekly basis so like share subscribe to the channel there's a notification bell that you can click that lets you know when there when a new video is being released and um and donate if you can listen y'all i've had a blast hanging with you guys for the last little bit and um i'm gonna leave it there my name is rich brown Thank you, as always, for visiting the Brownstone. Peace and love, y'all. I will see you in the next video.